eco effectiveness. Let's look at an example of a cherry tree. During springtime, have you seen thousands of cherry trees blossoming? Well, these beautiful trees are not only a pleasure to our eyes, but they also create fruit for birds, humans, and other animals without depleting their environment. Once they fall on the ground, their materials decompose and break down into nutrients for microorganisms, insects, plants, animals, and soil just about everything around it. Now just imagine what would the workspace building look like if it was like a cherry tree. It would look like this. A building would get a maximum of daytime light. It would contain a large window with plenty views of the outdoor. Each of the occupants would have five views from wherever he or she happens to sit. Delicious affordable food and drinks would be available to employees in a cafe that opens onto a sun-filled courtyard. Each employee can control the flow of fresh air and the temperature of their breathing zones in the office. The window opens, the cooling system maximizes natural air flows. At night, the system would flush the building with cool evening air. A layer of native plants would cover the building's roof, making it more attractive to songbirds and absorbing water runoff, while at the same time protecting the roof from thermal shock and ultraviolet degradation. Although this building is a perfect example of being efficient, it might cost more during construction. For example, windows that open are more expensive than windows that do not. However, the nighttime cooling strategy cuts down on the need of air conditioning. Employees have the advantage of fresh air and makes the indoor spaces more pleasurable, hence providing productive work. So in a long run, it's always more beneficial. These buildings represent only the beginnings of eco-effective design. And this is the difference between eco-efficiency and eco-effectiveness. Eco-efficiency tells us to use fewer materials, but eco-effectiveness tells us to use the material with the maximum advantage so that we have benefits in the long run. The concept of eco-effectiveness means working on the right things, on the right products and the services and the system instead of making the wrong things less bad. If we went along with the model of efficiency, there would be fewer cherry blossom and fewer nutrients, fewer trees, less oxygen and less clean water. Not only that, fewer songbirds, less diversity, less creativity and delight. The marvelous thing about effective systems is that we want more of them, not less. What is growth? Although industrial growth is not seen as a beautiful thing by the environmentalist, we all have to remember that not every growth is a bad thing. For example, we want to grow education, prosperity, clean water, and quality of life, not ignorance, sickness, and poisoned water. The important thing is to design human industries so that we get bigger and better, just like our cherry tree. Another great example is a community of ants. As a part of their daily activity, they safely and effectively handle their material waste and those of other species grow and harvest their food while nurturing the ecosystem of which they are a part, construct houses, farms, dumps, cemeteries, living quarters, and food storage facilities from materials that can be truly recycled, create disinfectants and medicines that are healthy, safe, and biodegradable, maintain soil health for the entire planet. Ants are a good example of a population whose density and productiveness are not a problem for the rest of the world because everything they make and use returns to the cradle-to-cradle -cradle cycles of nature. Like the cherry tree, they make the world a better place. Once upon a roof, conventional roofing surfaces are exposed to the sun all day, being prone to ultraviolet degradation and constant thermal shock. Now, what would be an effective roof? It's a light layer of soil covered with plant, more like a roof of Chicago's city hall, which maintains a stable temperature at the roof, providing free evaporative cooling in a hot weather and insulation in a cold weather, and seals it from the sun's destructive rays, making it last longer. A part of the roof is engineered to produce solar-generated electricity. Also, this roof looks more attractive and even saves it from being degrading. Becoming a native. It always becomes debate when people are talking about finding life on another planet. The idea of colonizing a new planet is appealing, but humans evolved on the earth and we are meant to be here. Its atmosphere, its nutrients, its natural cycles and our biological systems evolve together and support us here. While we recognize the great scientific value of space, 
exploration and the exciting potential of discovery there. We have to be cautious not to make a big mess here and go somewhere else, less hospitable, even if we figure out how. This does not mean that we don't support the current technological state. It is important to leave some natural places to thrive on their own, without undue human interference or habitation. The new design assignment. Here is an old joke about efficiency. An olive oil vendor returns from the marketplace and complains to his friend. I can't make money selling olive oil. By the time I feed the donkey that carries my oil to market, most of my profit is gone. His friend suggests he feed the donkey a little less. Six weeks later, they meet again at the marketplace. The oil seller is in poor shape, with neither money nor donkey. When his friends ask what happened, the vendor replies, Well, I did as you said. I fed the donkey a little less and I began to do really well. So I fed him even less and I did even better. But just at the point when it was becoming more successful, he died. Being eco-effective does not mean we have to starve ourselves. We first have to understand what it means and how to be eco-effective. In fact, here are some frameworks of eco-effectiveness as a takeaway gift. Buildings that, like trees, produce more energy than they consume and purify their wastewater. Factories that produce effluents that are drinking water. Products that, when their useful life is over, do not become useless waste, but can be tossed onto the ground to decompose and become food for plants and animals, and nutrients for soil, and alternatively, that can be returned to industrial cycles to supply high-quality raw materials for new products. Billions or even trillions of dollars worth of materials occur for human and natural purposes each year. Transportation that improves the quality of life while delivering goods and services. A world of abundance, not one of the limits, pollution and waste. Most importantly, every time we think about designing something, we should always remember the cherry tree. Thank you for watching us. The next chapter would be about waste equals food.